best parts of being a best-selling writer? Like, do, do people come up to you and say they named their babies after some of your characters? Have you gotten marriage proposals? Do you get, you know, free swag? Like, you what's know, the... if we get marriage proposals... <laughs> All right, you have to turn it down. <laughs> if we get a marriage proposal, it's not from somebody one want to write. <laughs> There's a lot of prison <laughs> offers. <laughs> We get we're very very well read in the uh, prison the penitentiary <laughs> system. Oh, you're letter. kidding! I, I get them all. Oh, really? you're kidding! Oh, really? Really? What? Oh I dear! I have a lot of incarcerated. <laughs> <men>. I do. <laughs> I, I, hi guys. <laughs> I was just going to tell a story about, uh, it's not a great, it's not a wonderful story, like, mm -hmm. but it's a funny story. Um, I was with my daughter and my husband at a restaurant once, and she was very young, mm -hmm. and she, <laughs> oh, she, she was, you know, and she was you know to coming. act up, and it was, she was getting really, really bored, mm -hmm. and you know, like, I want to go home, and the waitress did not bring the, the check, and did not bring the check, mm -hmm. so in an offer, in a maternal. Tell them what you're wearing. Oh, okay. So I'm. I had been playing oh. tennis. Okay. So I'm wearing um, a dirty T-shirt, which is sweaty, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, a, a mm -hmm. pair of cutoffs and, and jeans, and my hair is like. And, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, Oh God, come on, Rachel, we, mm -hmm. you know, settle down. And and mm -hmm. finally, dutifully, mm -hmm. and being a really good mom, I decided mm -hmm. to entertain her. So I hung mm -hmm. a spoon up my nose, oh, and, my. and I had given my um, credit card, la laid mm -hmm. it on the edge of the table, and I had this spoon on my nose. And the waitress comes by and she picks it up and she's kind of looking at me. Oh my God, you're Connie Brock. Oh <laughs> <laughs> and I went, No, I'm not. <laughs> I think that I actually uh, my head swung by. <laughs> oh, the spoon flew off, hit someone else in the head. <laughs> that's great. That's a great story. I told that's... that to Christine. She just followed me. <laughs> you can tell her still like it's funny. But yeah, um, is that the only time you've ever been recognized in public? No. Really? No. Oh, I've never been recognized. Sorry. No. Okay. No. Just, but mostly first. when I'm handing plastic okay. to someone. <laughs> <laughs> I've been mm -hmm. I think the only thing I can say there is that yeah. there is a baby Josie okay. out there from oh. who is named after the character in Pleasure for Pleasure, mm -hmm. and her mother has been kind enough to bring her to read it. It's a okay. signings of mine, so mm -hmm. I've actually got to hold Josie two or three mm -hmm. times, and I saw a photo of her yesterday, and she's gorgeous. That's Hi, Josie. Sweet. I do have Aww. a baby. Uh, someone named their kid McLaren okay. after McLaren's Island oh, wow. Isle, oh, right. and she yeah, had right. she wrote me and she said, "Is McLaren a word or mm -hmm. a real name?" I said, "No," mm -hmm. and she said, "I don't care. I'm naming my kid." And she sent me pictures too, so that That's was kind of nice. cool. Nice. Yeah. Julie, I thought you you had, you had a story. Oh well, add? my favorite story. Like, this mm -hmm. woman wrote me and said mm -hmm. that. Um, her mom had always liked to read murder mysteries and she read mm -hmm. romances and you know they didn't really cross and mm -hmm. then her mom was diagnosed uh, with lung cancer. Mm -hmm. She's quite young, she's in her late 30s and she got her mom hooked on my books. Okay. A couple weeks after that her mom passed away. Uh -huh. She when she went to collect all her things mm -hmm. out of and her mom was only 39 when she passed oh, away. Okay. Um, when mm -hmm. she went to collect her things from the hospital oh. room, she saw um, the book a book of mine, and she realized her mom had not had a chance to finish it, and so she went to her mom's gravesite, and she finished Gosh. reading the book to her at her oh gravesite. Um, yeah, so I, I, yes. I that's I nothing's ever that quite topped that story. No, that's wonderful. <laughs> I can Beautiful. tell you a tearjerker like that where she did oh. get to finish. Oh, really? No, we, do we have we're really going to cry. I want to see. Is your mascara? Is your mascara water? Is your makeup on? You know. No, at least a share, please. All right. Well, Alicia. I was writing a series of six books, which is a lot. It takes a long time, and I had a very devoted reader who wrote to me a lot, and I knew that she had health problems, but of course I had no idea what they were because I think um, romance. Some people are avid readers from the day they are thirteen, like I think my daughter is, and. Some people come to it when they're in grief or they're in strife or it's a difficult time. And so for her, that was the case. And she kept writing me and writing me. And I knew that she had an operation at some point. And, and then she wrote me and she said, well, I have to have a brain operation because the tumors come back. And I don't want to have that operation until the sixth book comes out. And I said, <laughs> do not cancel it because she said, I, I don't want to schedule this. I have to face this terrible decision. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, I sent her the manuscript. And unfortunately, she did pass away in the operation. So 
I look back at that and I'm like, you know, you, you try never to, to get too involved in your readers, but sometimes they reach out to you and if you can help in any way, you know, mm -hmm. as you did with a, her mother, mm -hmm. that was a bond for them right at the end. It's, it's a lovely thing. It makes up for all the hard parts being a writer.